The idea of proportionality is something general in math. It's not specific about forces. And if you have a good sense of how proportionality works and some of the mathematical techniques you can use as shortcuts when dealing with it, it will be really helpful when dealing with forces and many of the ideas we talk about later in this class. So first is this general relationship. This is a proportionality relationship where u and v are our variables, right? So these are the quantities we are talking about and that would look like, for instance, as we're talking about right now, force and acceleration. There's some proportionality constant that controls their relationship. And that's literally a constant. That can be a number, like 2, and it might have units, which is okay. If these are different types of quantities, u and v, we would expect it to have units. So we can write this relationship another way which is using this proportional sign. So I don't know if you've uh, seen this before. When you write it by hand, it's hard to not make it look like an alpha. So my alpha, right, it looks like this. My proportionality sign, in an attempt to make it look different, looks like that. My proportional sign looks much more like a fish. My alpha sign looks I don't know, like a different fish. So it's really hard for proportional symbols and alphas to not look the same. Um, so think a little bit about the context when you see something like this. In print it looks really different, but in handwriting not so much. So when you see this, this means that u is proportional to v. And you can invert this relationship. If this is true, it is completely also true to say that v is proportional to u. So why can we say if u is proportional to v that v is proportional to u? Well just imagine rearranging this equation. You get that v is equal to 1 over c times u. Well let's just redefine 1 over c to be b. Well now v is equal to b times u, again perfectly a proportional relationship. So this is uh, reversible. It has a symmetry. Now the mathematical technique we can use here as a simplification is realizing that in this case this means that if you double v u also doubles if you triple v u also triples etc and we can create this uh, ratio relationship and where this is coming from is that i can say again based on this initial one that c is equal to u over v well since c is constant if i have one value for u and one value for v that must be equal to c. But if I have a different value for u and a corresponding different value for v, well, again, I can just get rid of the c then and simplify down to this relationship by basically cross-multiplying, right? By taking this um, v up here, this u down there. So that's how we would get that. So by using this proportionality relationship, we can use ratios to just understand how one quantity changing relates to another quantity changing. You can now think about what this is going to look like on a plot. So in this case, u is like our y value and v is like our x value. So there you go. This is a linear plot where c is telling you your slope. And since c is a constant, your slope is constant. Notice that there's no offset. This must pass, pass through the origin because there's no plus b or plus m, whatever you use. So it passes through the origin, and this must be true for proportionality. To use that ratio technique, if there's some sort of offset over here, that isn't going to work. So again, these are the three equations I gave you before, and this is all going to be true if you see a plot that looks like this. Constant slope, and it passes through the origin. Now there's one more mathematical technique that will be really useful later in physics, even though we don't need it right now, and that is actually transforming a nonlinear proportionality. So in this case, I have u and w related, where instead of it being really simple, you have w on the bottom and it's squared. So if we just look at a plot, it doesn't look proportional. We don't see that nice straight line. But what we can say is that u is proportional to 1 over w squared. So what we could do is if we say that 1 over w squared equals y, y is now a function of w. It's not a constant. But you could then say that u 
is proportional to y. Well, then we can make a plot like this, right? So all you have to do is take your 1 over w squared and have that be your value rather than just w, and now you get a straight line. Again, this works because there isn't an offset. Once there's an offset, it won't work. And what we could then say right before, it's definitely true that we can say that the ratio of two values of u is the ratio of the corresponding values in this case of y because that's a proportionality but then you would have to use that relationship to go back to what's happening in w now in this case i could simplify this a little bit since each of these is a fraction and i can put w2 squared on the bottom w1 squared on the top so now it's simplified and this ratio is held true. So this is something that's going to be really helpful actually when we talk about energy later on in a few chapters. And you can always do this sort of transformation if there's no offset. So be careful about that, that this can't have some, if it has some like constant in it, then things don't look very pretty anymore. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, and again, this more complicated version you won't need for a few chapters, so just focus on the basic proportionality where you start with a plot like this, which is what we just saw for the relationship between acceleration and force.